This shocking near-death experience by former gay man Lucas Bennett reveals the terrifying truth about the afterlife that changed his whole life. What he saw will leave you speechless. My name is Lucas Bennett and I live in Burlington, Vermont. Before I tell you about my near-death experience, you need to know who I was. I worked as a graphic designer for a local ad agency and lived in a cozy two-story house near Lake Champlain. I was openly gay and had been seeing Henry for three years. That morning started like any other. I was driving to work in my Subaru Outback while sipping my usual caramel macchiato. The fall colors were beautiful and the cool air felt great. After talking with Henry on the phone about our plans for the weekend, all of a sudden, a huge moose appeared out of nowhere on Route 7 in Vermont. Moose accidents happen all the time, but nothing prepares you for a 1,500-pound animal suddenly standing in your path. I swerved hard to avoid it, but at 70 miles per hour, my car lost control, and the last thing I remember is my coffee cup flying through the air as it rolled down the steep embankment. The crash was terrible. Before coming to a stop at the bottom of the ravine, my car hit several trees. The impact crushed the driver's side, and I was trapped between the steering wheel and the seat. Later, I learned that a passing truck driver saw my car's taillights through the trees and called for help. The steep terrain made it hard for emergency services to get to me, and it took them over an hour to cut me out of the wreckage. By that time, I had lost a lot of blood from my injuries. I was airlifted to the University of Vermont Medical Center in Burlington with four broken ribs, a punctured lung, internal bleeding, and severe head trauma. I remember hearing pieces of the rescue, the sound of metal being cut, voices shouting instructions, and the warring of helicopter BL blades. The doctors later told me that I died twice in the helicopter, once for three minutes, and again for four minutes. Henry was at work when he got the call. He rushed to the hospital, but I was already in emergency surgery. Multiple surgeries were needed to stop the internal bleeding and fix the damage to my organs. What happened when my heart stopped changed everything. The experience was so real and vivid that it completely changed how I thought about life, death, and everything I thought I knew about being alive. It wasn't like the peaceful, loving experiences you often hear about in near-death stories. What I saw and felt was something completely different, something that would haunt me forever. Before this happened, I was happy with who I was. I had a good life with a loving partner and a successful job. I never thought about my beliefs or way of life. As a child, I went to Catholic school but hadn't been to church since high school. I didn't think religion needed to be a part of my life because I thought that if there was a God, he would accept me just the way I was. But those minutes when I was clinically dead showed me how wrong I had been. The experience shook me to my core and forced me to face truths I had been avoiding my whole life. What I saw in those moments between life and death would change not only my beliefs, but also the way I live my whole life. When my heart stopped, everything changed. It wasn't like falling asleep or passing out. It was instant and crystal clear. As I float above the helicopter, I could see the paramedics working hard on my lifeless body below but I felt strangely detached from it all, like I was watching a movie about someone else. Then there was the tunnel. Not the calm, warm light that most people describe, but a swirling vortex that pulled me in with incredible force. It felt like being sucked through a vacuum at impossible speeds, and colors I'd never seen before swirled around me. There was a deep hum that seemed to vibrate through my whole being. As I moved through the tunnel, I started to feel like my life's actions were being laid bare. It wasn't just memories playing back. It was like I was living every moment at once, but this time I felt the full weight and consequence of every action. There was a bodily weight on me for every lie I told, every person I hurt, and every selfish choice I made. The revelations that hurt me the most were about my relationships. I saw Henry, but not in the loving way I was used to seeing him. Instead, I saw how our relationship, which I had always protected as love, was actually hurting both of us spiritually. Every private moment we shared showed up as dark spots on our souls, like ink drops in clear water. I saw my childhood when I first started feeling different from other boys. I remembered the confusion, the fear, and eventually the defiance against traditional values. But now from this new perspective, 
I could see how each step away from my early religious upbringing had led me further from truth. The tunnel experience felt like it lasted for hours, though it was probably just seconds in real time. Then suddenly everything stopped. I found myself in a vast space that defied description. It wasn't dark or light, it just was, and I wasn't alone. A presence approached me. It wasn't a physical form, but I knew immediately who it was. Jesus Christ himself. The recognition came with absolute certainty, like suddenly remembering something you've always known, but somehow forgot his presence was overwhelming. Pure love mixed with an authority that made me want to fall to my knees. But this wasn't the gentle Jesus from Sunday school pictures. This was the King of Kings, the judge of all creation in his presence. Every justification I'd ever made for my lifestyle crumbled to dust. I couldn't hide anything not from him, not from myself. He didn't speak with words, but his message flowed directly into my consciousness. I knew that he loved me very much, almost too much, but that love didn't mean that he agreed with all of my decisions. I realized that the way I was living, which I thought was normal and right, was actually going against what God had planned. It was clear to me that my sexual orientation wasn't the sin, it was choosing to act on it and make it my identity that was. Every time I told someone to be themselves by accepting their homosexuality, I saw how this choice had affected not only me, but also those around me. I had actually been leading them away from salvation. The hardest part was when Jesus showed me other souls who had made the same choice as me. I saw them in a place that wasn't quite hell, but wasn't heaven either. They were stuck in their own excuses and couldn't move forward because they wouldn't understand the truth about their choices. What really struck me was that many of these souls were religious, even Christians, but they had chosen to misinterpret the Bible in ways that supported their lifestyle rather than following God's plan. I saw how this choice to misinterpret had put a wall between them and true salvation. Jesus then led me to see something that still makes me shudder. I caught glimpses of hell, but it wasn't the comic version with red devils and pitchforks. It was a much scarier place, away from God's love, where souls face the full effects of their choices. I realized at that point that hell wasn't a punishment God made out of anger, but rather the logical result of choosing to live apart from Him forever. The souls there had made that choice in their earthly lives, and now that choice had been made forever. What happened next was even worse. Jesus started to show me the truth about sexuality and gender the way He planned it. I saw that the union of a man and a woman was more than just physical. It was a spiritual reality that showed deep truths about God's relationship with people. I learned about how modern countries work. Accepting alternative lifestyles wasn't growth, it was a clever way to trick people. Every move away from standard marriage and gender roles was a move away from God's truth. As the revelation went on, I was shown the spiritual effects of pride parades, gender transition surgeries, and same-sex marriages. From this heavenly view, I could see the spiritual darkness that surrounded these events, even though they seemed like happy, celebratory times. What hurt the most was realizing how my activism had affected other people every time I spoke out for LGBTQ plus rights. I was knowingly leading others away from salvation, and the weight of this responsibility was crushing. Jesus showed me specific times when I had led others astray, conversations I'd had, social media posts I'd made, and young people I'd influenced. Each time felt like a stone around my neck, and I felt the full weight of my role in leading others astray. But through it all, I didn't feel condemned by Jesus. I only felt an overwhelming love and desire for them. For me to understand the truth, he showed me how many of my gay friends were actually struggling with their choices, even though they seemed happy and proud of their choices. Then he showed me two possible futures. In one, I continued my current lifestyle and died without changing, facing the eternal consequences. In the other, I accepted the truth, quit my gay lifestyle, and helped others do the same. The difference between these two futures was stark and undeniable. I was shown that my same-sex feelings weren't my fault. They were the result of different influences and experiences in my life. It was up to me to decide how to act on them. Jesus told me that he could give me the strength to fight these desires even if they wouldn't go away completely in this life. The most powerful moment for me was seeing people who had left the gay lifestyle. 
They had been through a lot, but their joy in following truth was even greater. I saw the crowns of victory they won in heaven by making hard but honest decisions on earth. This part of the experience ended with a deep understanding. True love doesn't support everyone's choices. It helps people find their way to God's truth, even if that truth is hard or unpopular. At this point in my experience, everything changed. I was in what I can only describe as a heavenly courtroom, but I wasn't being put on trial. Instead, I was being given a choice. I could go back to earth with this new knowledge, or I could face judgment right then. This choice had a huge impact on my life. I knew that if I went back, I would have to change everything about my life. I would lose friends, be criticized, and have to leave Henry, who I loved very much. But I also knew that if I stayed, I would have to face punishment for my sins that I hadn't admitted. Jesus told me that my coming back would be for a bigger reason. My story could help people who are stuck in the same way of life I was. He told me about all the gay people who secretly wanted to change, but were too scared or confused to do so. He showed me the support system I would have if I decided to go back to being a Christian. There would be real Christians who would help me make the change, counselors who understood the spiritual side of sexuality, and even some unexpected allies. The most moving part was realizing that my story might have saved other people. I was shown specific people, some of whom I knew, and some of whom I hadn't met yet, whose lives would be changed by my story. Their eternal fates could change because I was willing to tell the truth before I made my choice. One last picture was shown to me. I saw myself telling my story to big groups of people and helping others break free from the gay lifestyle. People who accepted God's plan for sexuality healed and got back on their feet, which made me cry. But I also saw the cost. I could hear people calling me a racist and a traitor to the LGBTQ community. What was worse was seeing old friends turn their backs on me. I faced attacks on social media and even threats to my safety, but I also saw the peace that comes from living in the truth. The choice was clear. With a mix of fear and determination, I chose to return. As soon as I made this choice, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace and purpose, even though I knew the challenges that lay ahead. Just before I returned to my body, I received one last message. My job wasn't to judge, but to love and help others find the same truth I had found, always with kindness and understanding, because I knew I had been blind to these truths too. Getting up in the hospital was like being born again. The pain was terrible, but it wasn't as bad as the spiritual awakening I had been through. Henry was by my bedside holding my hand, but I knew that things would never be the same between us again. The first few weeks were the hardest because telling Henry what I had seen broke both of our hearts. He thought that the head injury had changed my mind and that I would come to my senses once I got better, but I knew what I had seen was real. I found a church that would support me and started the hard journey of transformation. Some days were easier than others, and same-sex attractions didn't go away magically, but I now had the strength and understanding to resist them. As expected, my story got a lot of attention on social media very quickly. I got a lot of backlash from the LGBTQ community. Old friends accused me of internalized homophobia and betraying the cause. But for every person who turned me down, someone privately reached out to me with their own doubts about the gay lifestyle. Now, two years later, I run a support group for people who are questioning their sexuality or wanting to leave the LGBTQ lifestyle. Sharing the truth with love and helping those who choose to follow God's plan is what it's all about, not conversion therapy or pushing people to change. The accident that almost killed me saved my life and many others as well. Every week I get messages from people who found hope and healing through my story. Some have chosen to leave the gay lifestyle, others are still trying to make up their minds, but they all know they're loved by God. My near-death experience taught me that true love sometimes means telling hard truths. The eternal consequences are too terrible to keep quiet. I lost my old life, but I gained something much more valuable, the peace of living in the truth. If this story touched you, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to set off the notification bell to get more amazing stories that could change your life.